Hey guys, it is time for our tutorial for the Franks. Yeah, so let's let's see what this sieve has to offer. We already are in the tech tree. It's a cavalry civilization. Castles cost minus twenty five percent. Cavalry plus twenty percent hit points starting in feudal age. Farm upgrades for free. Requires a meal. Uh, foragers work twenty five percent faster. Unique unit is the X-Men, unique decks, chivalry, stables work 40% faster, bearded X plus one strong X-Men range, and the team bonuses knights get plus two line of sight. So with uh, Franks we can see uh, as uh, well detective suggest Paladins is probably the way to go for us. Paladins and Scouts they get sick Paladins. They also get fully upgraded halves, fully upgraded uh, champions, right? I think so, fully upgraded champions? Yeah. But that we, like, we don't want to get the champions. Get hand cannoneers, mm, cannons, no siege onagers. They got uh, pleb monks, so monks is not the way to go with them. And uh, let's discuss what is the way to go with them on Arena. This time we'll be playing versus. A dude called Mr. Tempo. This will be Franks versus Britons. Uh, so let's see the build order and see what we usually want to do with Franks. So what we usually want to do with Franks is to go scouts. Like I don't see many scenarios where you don't want to start as uh, scouts with Franks. Like the only options I can see is that a you are getting trashed. Or be your playing a sieve that will probably go for unique units like uh, Spanish or Turks or Burmese. Then, if your opponent does a, a defensive castle and goes for cons, for example, and you're going scouts, your scouts will be quite useless. But versus most other sieves like Britons, starting with scout is the way to go. You have uh, your scouts get extra HP, and uh, and yeah. And you want to take early map control, you want to take the relics. Look how how better the relics are for him this game. I didn't see it, I uh, didn't notice it during the game. That's so unfair, thanks D. Anyway, let's see the build order. So we start with uh, 6 on uh, ship, 4 on wood, then we go 1 on boar. And we are going for the berries. The berries are huge for Franks, they have the bonus for getting the berries faster. Get in the boar, then two more on berries. Yeah. Then another boar. And then on foot we get to 20 population. And then we go on wood. So we had the second lumber camp, that's at least my scout build order. Two on gold. Obviously, we're getting the deer slash ibexes. And then two more on wood. And the last villager before we click up is to make the barracks and then we send it to the berries. So, the idea here is to go for scouts as soon as possible. I was expecting the Britons player to go archers. Uh, so, I thought scouts will be good to deal with it early on. You can see we do the market, the blacksmith, and we are on the way to Feudal Age. Now, as soon as we are in Feudal Age, you see that the, the Frank Scouts get the extra HP, 54 versus 45. So we send it outside on aggressive stance to patrol and hoping we will meet that scout so we can wreck it. So now, uh, as you can see, the, uh, the berries are already out because, well, the Frank collects the berries quite faster. So you can make way more farms as Franks, and which will be quite good for our scouts. So see, I try to keep six on wood here, six on wood here, two on gold, and the rest are making farms. Also, another tip that I didn't show you, but you need to pay attention to: uh, with Franks, you get the free meal upgrade. So you want to start making your farms as soon as you reach feudal age. So I started with, game, the, with two farms in Dark Age, I did only two, usually I do like three, four, but with Franks I did only two. And I get the extra food from the berries anyway, I collect the berries faster, so you can delay your farms a bit up to Feudal Age. 
and then as soon as you get the farm upgrade automatically once you hit feudal age it's time to add those farms you see i'm adding a lot of farms with ranks so my dude expected that like you usually expect the frank player to go for uh, scouts so he's adding some spearmen along with archers we don't know that yet and now i saw the spearmen and i uh, ran back to regroup and once I had my four scouts, it's easy to snipe those spearmen. Some micro. Yeah. So now, as soon as we hit Castle Age, not only with Frank, but with most Civ on Arena, obviously adding the Monastery is number one priority usually, because you want to get the relics as soon as possible. So I was able to do it on center straight. Uh, you also always want to make the town centers like in strategic positions as this one is on the wood and on the gold which is great for me builders won't have to walk far and my next will be here on the wood lane so as soon as i have the wood i'm adding more town centers i have 12 farmers which is quite nice and i keep adding scouts since well i saw that he's doing military so i expected uh, i expected those archers uh, well I didn't notice them, I did expect them, but I didn't notice them, <laughs> so I lost one scout. And the idea was to keep an, uh, to try and keep a scout around to snipe the monks, uh, so I failed here. Oh, I actually saved the scout, okay. But now the, my scouts were super injured, sending them back home to heal. And then we try and snipe again. I kept adding monks, kept adding scouts, because I knew he will keep adding archers, so I will need more and more scouts. Even if you have the gold, you can add some knights, but you'll have to try and snipe those monks with a light cap. I actually caught that monk on time. And I took the fight, I used the monk, you see, I used the monk to convert to crossbows, and I basically cleared everything. And that's another trick that you guys might want to use on Arena. As soon as you see someone within inside and you have more military and you know that you can do damage, what I always try to do is to put one scout on stand ground and leave it straight under the gate. So this means that this gate won't close down, my two other scouts and the crossbows that I converted can now do the damage. You see? That scout is on stand ground, the rest are honking villagers. So I kill like how many builders already? One, two. And he had no loom, which was huge for me. So that's a few more villagers I'm getting. Yeah, he lost a lot here. You see that scout did an amazing job. So at this stage I already was uh, four, five builders ahead. Even six, I got another one. My economy was fully working. Uh, you need to always pay attention that you set a gather point for a town center. You see that I missed it here. So those are two idols for a while. Yeah. And then I tried to uh, get the relics. He converted one light cap, so I had to deal with it. Yeah, as soon as I see he kept making crossbows, I decided, well, one stable won't be enough to deal with that. I need more light cap, I need more knights. So I decided to add more stables. I had 23 farmers already, so that's enough uh, to keep production of light cap. And I kept adding farms. As far as I remember, I did four stables in uh, Castle Age, because I really want the map control. You see, I didn't know that he was pushing, but he was making armies, so it was still a good idea to make... Uh, to make more light cap. I even did upgrades, I did defense upgrade, I did attack upgrade, which is also always important. And yeah, it helped me clear everything. Now I saw the push. I even added husbandry, I added some knights as far as I remember. And obviously we keep booming, we keep making farms. So I got zero relics in the end, which is quite sad. I went scouts to take relics, but because the relics were so much better for him, I now use those light cap that was supposed to help me to just take map control. See, I cleared uh, basically everything. Need to pay attention uh, 
to not to do only knights because you always want to have some life after snipe down monks. And in the end I did get a few relics, if I remember correctly. Yeah, he didn't actually take that relic <laughs> under his gate, so I went and stole it. And now my plan was, well, I probably said to myself, I have a huge economy lead. Uh, I have a friend Paladins, which is probably the strongest Paladin in the game. Maybe now Teuton Paladins is getting close in the new patch, I'm not sure, but I still think the friend Paladins is the best in the game. Uh, so I said to myself, well, even if he goes helps, my Paladins will wreck everything. So all I need to do is to just get to Imperial Age, get to those Paladins, and I will win the game. I kept doing light caps though to take map control. It's not my money here, but it didn't matter. I cleared everything already. I also left uh, one light cap to guard the relic. You always want to keep guarding the relic. He can uh, sn send a sneaky man and get it. So always try to pay attention to the relics. And now I'm getting it. Same then they got the relics. Okay, so now Vildur lead is 16 Vildurs ahead for me, and here was my uh, fuck up. <laughs> like, you should not do that. Even though I had way more military, he had pikemen. And he had pikemen with, uh, with upgrades, so he basically cleared all my military. Uh, that could have been uh, bad for me if my economy wasn't that much ahead. Now I decided, well, I'm Franks, I have cheap castles, so I need to put the castles in strategic places. He's Britons, so that gold is in range for him, so one castle to defend the gold. And since I have cheap castles, soon I will have stone to make another castle. And again, I would make it in a strategic place here, to secure my relics, to secure my farms, to secure the... Uh, to basically secure my base with a castle here, I cannot really push. But I did lose all my military. But I, will, I already was on the way to Imperial Age, and still, even though I'm Franks, even though he has spikes, I decided he cannot stop Franks Paladins, man. Not when the difference in economy is that big. So I knew I'll get Kivalry, which is huge. Those knights will be produced 40% faster. And yeah. Also, we didn't discuss other options for Franks when I think about it except Paladins. So besides going Scout, which is the way to go to, uh, if you're getting Man Crushed or, for example, Corn Crushed, if you're playing against Spanish or against Sif's unique units, going Castle Defense and Booming might uh, be quite good, because Franks, well, Franks get cheaper castles, so you can get uh, almost like two castles in the price of a normal castle. So you can just like, go on stone early, make castles around your base, and uh, yeah. Another way is that uh, people play Franks is with X-Men, for example, if you are very successive, like, I don't know, uh, Celts or so, that goes for Siege and Halves usually, uh, X-Men might be a good addition, but since I knew that he will try to do Arbalest and won't go solely Halves, I, I guess that, Hal uh, that Paladins would be enough to win this game. So I'm messing those Paladins. Totally secured my base with that castle, and you can see the numbers. Military numbers are even, but my military is so much stronger. I have great economy, I'm getting paladins and taking all the resources around my back base. And yeah, once the paladins are up, I go out and raid. He has not he has halves, but still look at the difference. I have 29 uh, 29 Paladins, he has 27 halves, but I guess I would still have won, but I didn't want to take the fight yet. I wanted to use all my Paladins, I had way more. I had 53 Paladins. He just cannot deal with those numbers, doesn't matter if he goes halves. He cannot win these fights, we will see it soon. Oh, sick Paladins, just clear everything. They clear the halves, they clear... Uh, the Arbalest, they clear everything. I actually got this castle up, but that's not a problem for my Paladins. Just cannot mess enough military to deal with those Paladins. And yeah, I, I thought to myself, well, just 
to not throw this game. I'll make uh, I'll make ranges just in case. You always want to have a B plan. Like if he has 100 halves, maybe I'll need a few skirmishers. Another idea is to go X Men, but I added the skirmisher just in case uh, I'll run out of gold. And then I'm taking map control. You always want to expand around the map, make castles in strategic places like this. It's a curious the stone and the gold. It's also a forward castle, so it pushes. And you can see those friend paladins, man, they are created so fast once you have killery. That's another bad fight that I took. <laughs> I almost Titanic here. But then you just escape out, you take the fight, and he can cannot stop those paladins. Those Frank paladins are sick. Arbalest do nothing to them. And well, he doesn't resign, so we do another castle on his face. <laughs> Basically here the game was over, it just to show you how strong Frank Paladins are. But yeah, for example if I edit X-Men now with those Paladins, he can't he wouldn't even be able to touch the Paladins. But I decided, well, what I like to do is to go only one, one type of units. And if I can get Frank Paladins, I will go Frank Paladins. <laughs> I will not add anything else. Again, this is also a bad idea what I did here. Like doing a form monastery <laughs> just to take the relics is usually a bad idea because, well, the monastery might go down and you will lose the relics again. It's always best to make a monastery at the back of your base and try to take the relics all the way back. But I knew here that the game was over, so there is no way he can win this, so I'll just take the relics here and put them here. I was gonna do another castle, but then he called it. Call it? Yes, he called it. So, hope you enjoyed this tutorial, boys. Again, don't forget to like and subscribe to my pleb channel. And thanks for watching. If you have any questions about Franks, let me know. And again, if you want to see, to choose my next sieve, please leave a comment. And thanks for watching and bye-bye, boys.